conclusion inevitable. It was a jump to conclusions, Matt. My conclusion was that this idea was not a practical deterrent. My only conclusion can be that it was a Sith Lord. In conclusion. Hello there, folks. Welcome back to In Conclusion, the only movie podcast powered by Reindeer Drool. I'm Dan O'Keefe, and joining me as always, wishing she could just suckle from the teat of a reindeer's mouth to get some of that sweet, sweet drool, it's Anna Otto. How are you, Anna? I should have made reindeer drool tea before this podcast instead of mint. Oh, well, you know what? Next week, I will. Reindeer drool, for those of you who don't know, which includes me, um, is a tea made by a local Milwaukee tea shop called fava tea if you're in milwaukee i'm gonna shout them out because i love them fava tea shop there fava tea don't even in brookfield don't sponsor us we'll just advertise for you anyway pretty much like i i love them sorry i'm giving them free press but their tea slaps and there's only two stores they're a small business we love small businesses we love small smaller the better i want every company to be a one-person business Mm -hmm. i hope your sales are $5 annually. I'll talk about you more if they are. (laughs) Uh, So today we're doing something different. We're not talking about one movie. We're talking about potentially over 16, depending on how the mouth mouth works out. I meant to say math, depending on how that mouth do. um, Ew, Dan. (laughs) We could be talking about a lot. 15 and a half, because one is I'll be home for Christmas, which we already discussed last week. Yes, and that is uh, definitely not on my list. So Yeah, um, weird flex, but okay. We, we're we kind of going to be counting down the top eight Christmas movies, or our top eight Christmas movies. Um, but Anna couldn't rank them. So <laughs> I have mine ranked, and Anna has hers I know what, as a grouping. I know what my number eight movie is. <laughs> and I think I can pick it out from there. Okay. Um, before we get into the list and all that, I think I have some honorable mentions that I think yeah, we need hit to me, talk about. Um, I'm going to have things to add. I know I am. So actually, before I have my honorable mentions, I have three, four movies that, no, three movies that I put in a separate category called Christmas Adjacent. They're yes, okay. they're not Christmas movies, but they take place around Christmas. They don't have like the Christmas spirit about them. But Santa doesn't make an appearance. Eh, maybe um, he okay. doesn't one of them, but it's just it's Christmas adjacent. It's like right over there. It's happening, but it's not a major thing in the plot. OK, we'll see. I have a few movies that I was thinking of mentioning that we're similar in that vein as well so mm-hmm. let's see if any of ours match okay so the three that i have are rocky four oh because okay. the the prize fight against drago takes place at christmas time actually on christmas mm, okay. that's where he ends communism um love that i know unless it's the version in russia no, then, then he, he loses <laughs> he superpowers communism he makes it more yes <laughs> um Going on the Stallone train, the second Christmas adjacent movie is Cobra, which is one of my We're favorites. On two very different pages. I know right we now, are, but okay. Um, so Cobra, Stallone plays Marion Cabretti. Crime is a disease, and he is the cure. And it takes place around Christmas time. I think that's just because when that's when they were filming it, and like the neighbors of the filming location had Christmas lights on their balcony. Maybe. It's a great movie. It's not. It's not a good movie. It's one of the quickest movies I've ever seen, though. Um, and the last... No. I was going to say, no offense to Sylvester Stallone, but I, every movie I've heard of that he's been in, besides Rocky, mm-hmm. has been disliked by the person telling me about it. Oh, I love Cobra. I do not dislike that movie. Okay, I, okay. I just acknowledge it's not a good movie. Which is how I feel about I'll be home for Christmas. Okay. So. We have we were each allowed one as a treat. Thank you. Um Thank you, Dan. And the last Christmas adjacent movie I have is Catch Me If You Can. Wow. We have completely different movies. Wow. Okay. Um So Catch Me If You Can, it's not 
a Christmas movie, but there are like three pivotal scenes that take place on Christmas. He, Mm -hmm. when he is at the like awards banquet for Christopher Walken, that's on Christmas. Um, when he gets captured at the end, spoilers, he gets catched. Um, that's on Christmas Eve. He actually, like, there's a choir, a children's choir singing Christmas. And then when he gets back to America and escapes, he goes to his house where his mom has remarried somebody else. And he sees who I assume is his half sister, like, standing in front of the Christmas tree. And that's when he has, like, the realization. He's like, I'm done. I'm done with my life of crime. Lord above. So I. That was the hardest one to put on the Christmas adjacent list because I'm like, I mean, it, it's never been advertised as a Christmas movie. No one has ever thought of it as a Christmas movie. No, but the movies I'm about to say are probably the same thing. Nobody ever thinks of them as a Christmas movie. Yeah. But what are they? Batman Returns. Okay. Gremlins. Yeah. Um, people think of that as a Christmas movie. She okay, has the whole I like speech about people. Santa dying in the chimney. Mm-hmm. Ho ho ho. Um, and Shazam. Yeah, that is a Christmas movie. Mm-hmm, or Christmas mm-hmm. adjacent, around Christmas. Notice how we're not mentioning Top Gun. Like, let's just take a minute. It was a Top it's Gun, die or hard. is it? Which is... Oh, Gage just yelled Die Hard. Funny <laughs> in the room. Notice how I don't care for either of those movies. Well, I don't have Die Hard on my Christmas adjacent list. I have that on my honorable mentions. Cause... Oh. Because Die Hard, the plot of it can't happen without Christmas. The people, the the reason the you robbers are there, yeah, Top Gun can't happen because the Russians. <laughs> we don't can't have a Christmas. homoerotic volleyball <laughs> scene without Christmas. Not on Jesus's day. Um, no way. The robbers choose to rob Nakatomi Plaza because they know there will be way less security on that day because it's Christmas. The only reason that John oh. McClane is out there is to see his wife at the Christmas party. The only reason they get stuck is because they're in a Christmas party. I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. That's what you know the classic some... Santa line. You want to know some tea? I do. Is it the reindeer? only reason why? I wish it was. <laughs> um, the only reason why I know anything about Die Hard is because of the musical episode of Bob's Burgers. Uh, the one where there's the two musicals. I haven't seen it. Do you know, know what I'm talking about? I, I know oh, of it. it. I haven't seen it, though. What is it? Die Die Let me look it up. There are so I've I've seen Die Hard. It's good. It's very good. I I've seen the last ten minutes of Die Harder. Not very good. Die Hard with a Vengeance? Great. And then there are mm-hmm. other Die Hards. Here, it's called Work Hard or Die Trying Girl, because it's the combination of Die Hard and Working Girl. And Working Girl. girl? <laughs> that's I awesome. thought that's what it was called, but I couldn't remember. That's great. Anyway. Um what else do you have as an honorable mention, or do you have anything? Or should I get into mine and see mm, if they would overlap? Uh, now, let me just say, I really only have one. Okay. And it's controversial because, obviously, Martin Freeman. Okay. He always gets cut. You know where I'm going with this? Is it The Hobbit? No, it's Love Actually. Oh, I don't like Love Actually. <laughs> I like it, but not enough to watch it annually. I only watch it when somebody else wants to watch it, Mm -hmm. and I'm there, and I'm like, is it the cut version, or am I going to see Martin Freeman, even though it's going to be weird? Like, (laughs) what's the tea here? And, like, I don't know. It's just, (laughs) I have nothing against being basic. Like what you like, but I I don't like it that much. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I like it. I like a lot. Like, all the actors that are in it are awesome, and I've definitely seen it more than once. Mm -hmm. But... It's just a sappy romance movie. Like, if I want to see a sappy romance movie at Christmas time, why don't I just turn on the Hallmark Channel? Yeah. You know? But I guess, like, if I want to see, like, actors that are A, what is it? A listers? Yeah. Sorry, I was going to say Class A, and then I was like, wait, that's not <laughs> it. A listers. I guess I could watch it. I don't know. I feel like they all have works that I'd rather see them in than love, actually. Yeah. You know? Like, half of them are in Pirates of the Caribbean. Half of them are also in Harry Potter. Exactly. Well, half of well, England is really. in it's Harry Potter. Alan Rickman, may he rest in peace. And Die uh, Hard. Emma. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Emma Thompson's yeah. in Harry Potter, too. Um, so my honorable mm. mentions, 
And isn't the singer. Anyway, sorry. Now I'm just remembering. Yeah. Go ahead. Your honorable mentions. Yeah, my honorable mentions. The Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Oh, yeah. I was going to put that on there, too. But I've only seen it a couple times. It's fun. It's a good movie. Um, Mm -hmm. Die Hard, as I mentioned before. I'm glaring at you. I have my... I have half of my screen covered with my list, so I just see myself talking, so I can't even see your face. It's wonderful. How lucky for you. I'm sipping my tea and glaring. One second, let me let me move it across the screen. Ooh, that's a glare. That no. is a that is Notice a lo- how my eyes are almost entirely shut because I'm scowling. It's like the the school librarian catches you eating an entire ham sandwich in the library. <laughs> I have a story about a school librarian, but it's like me they were able to take over our computers, you know? Uh-huh. And I was Googling Disney things instead of doing my job because I was that kid. Okay. And the librarian overtook my computer. This was in high school. The librarian overtook my computer and in the Google search bar where I was Google searching like Mickey Mouse limited edition. (laughs) He typed in get to work and closed out. (laughs) And it was the scariest thing I've ever experienced in my life. Okay. Anyway. Uh, Little do you know, that wasn't the librarian. That was Mickey Mouse. Probably. He wanted you to become a functioning adult. Um, Did he? I'm not there yet. <laughs> I know. I have the Polar Express as my next honorable mention. Cute. Cute. It's fun. They do have dead eyes, Starring though. Starring Tom Hanks as every character. Yeah, except for the one uh, girl with horrible posture. I just Surprised. She's also voiced by Tom Hanks. Oh, my gosh. And the nerd. The nerd, Tom Hanks. Mm. Um, They're all Tom Hanks. Next honorable mention is Rowland. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which could have fallen into... Um, I've never seen that movie, but I have a lipstick by that name. Oh, it's mm-hmm. it's a Shane Black movie. Uh, he mm-hmm. wrote Lethal Weapon. Basically, every movie oh, that okay. he writes is set around Christmas time. Um, but mm-hmm. the reason I put it as an honorable mention instead of as an actual Christmas adjacent movie is because like Christmas is pivotal mm-hmm. to the plot. That's the reason things are happening where they're happening. Yeah. Um, Dan, you know, as we're discussing this, I'm sorry for interrupting, but I've just had a thought, and it's something I've discussed with some of my friends mm -hmm. over the past. I mean, not that you're not my friend, but you know what I mean. Some of my other friends. I don't get it. Over the. I don't know what you mean. I hate you. (laughs) Maybe I'm rethinking our friendship. Um, No, but one of our friends said, do you think Nightmare Before Christmas is a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie? I think it's a Halloween movie through and through. Really? Yeah. I think you can watch it anytime from Halloween to Christmas. I think you can, but I guess because it's anchored in Halloween versus being anchored in Christmas. Like all the characters come from Halloween land or whatever Except it's called. Halloween Town, isn't it? No. No, it's not Halloween ha- Town. Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, and like, I think it would be different if instead of Jack Skellington. It was Rudolph Candy Canington as the main character. Ew. But the song, What's This, where he's singing about Krimbus? Mm-hmm. First of all, that's a piece of art. Thank you, Danny Elfman, for your work. Um, and with a, man, Elfman, with, a, with a name like Danny Elfman, it'd be perfect I associate, for Christmas. Yeah, he's the man behind the weird science mm-hmm. music. He's too, Oingo like, Boingo. Yeah, he is. He's got a lot of interesting things um but anyway mm-hmm. danny elfman love him love his work so you said but yeah i think it's i think you could watch it at christmas time but is it we a christmas to... movie is no. it okay i think it's just a movie i think it's a christmas adjacent movie okay but it's also halloween adjacent yeah it's a seasonal it's got... movie yeah it's got the word christmas in it it also has the word nightmare in it and the word before <laughs> Yes. <gasps> Good job, Dan. I can't believe that it's and actually the the. a prequel to the Ethan Hawke movie Before Sunrise. Get out. <laughs> Goodbye. I have two more honorable mentions. Okay. Uh, uh, number one is Black Nativity, which is a adaptation of a Langston Hughes play, Black Nativity. I was going to say, isn't that a play? <laughs> like, yeah. It's good. I, I saw, was so confused for a second. I saw it with my brother's... Um, it was not the type of movie that would draw a large audience in Northbrook, Illinois, a predominantly white yeah. upper middle class suburb. Um, so the theater was pretty empty when we saw it, but it was good. It was really enjoyable. Mm-hmm. It has a 
Good. great, like the spirit of Christmas flows through it very strongly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, yeah, I didn't know it was a movie. I'd only ever heard of the play. Yeah, it's good. You should see it. It's You can okay. find it somewhere. It's yeah, yeah. probably I'll streaming on Quibi. Not Especially, Quibi. Quibi died. Rip, 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 rip. <laughs> probably on Hulu. <laughs> probably. Uh, and the last honorable mention is A Christmas Story. Honorable mention? It is an honorable mention, yeah. I never watched it as a kid. I think that's the big reason. Pretty much every movie that I have on my list is I watched them as a, when I was a kid. So it feels like Christmas to me. But I didn't watch A Christmas Story until like two years ago. So I was like, oh, this is fun. This is cute. But it doesn't resonate with me like all the other ones do. We really lived different lives. We did, Dan. yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're going to be oh, well. really upset by my number eight choice on my list then. Because I put A Christmas Story not on the list. Yeah, I am i don't know if I'm going to be able to do this episode, but I guess we'll try. <laughs> anyway, I guess let's just dive in. What's your number eight, Dan, uh, since you already hurt my feelings once? Before I get to number eight, at least when I was making the list, I excluded mm-hmm. TV specials. So I don't okay. have Rudolph or Charlie Brown or anything on there. Um, I did include them because, and we'll get to it when I get to it, okay. but they were very formative to my childhood. Oh, yeah, I agree. I was just trying to make it more difficult for me because I hate myself. Um, okay. Fair. Had I included it, Charlie Brown would be number one and Rudolph would be number two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, anyway, number eight is Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas. That's my number eight. Really? <gasps> Dan! <laughs> Oh my okay. gosh. <laughs> We're back. We're back on the same page. Dan? Uh-huh. I forgive you for what you said about Christmas story. I thought you were going to be so upset cuz you're going to be like, "Oh, you put that on the list and you didn't put no. a Christmas story?" Quite the opposite. Oh, contraire, Daniel. I also put Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas as my number 8. Oh my gosh. I think we watched it together one year. Probably. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, okay. It's, okay. It's great. You got it's three movies in one, and some of that, like, there's the gift of the Magi, mm-hmm. classic retelling. You the know, best retelling of it ever. Mm-hmm. I think I can't think mm-hmm. of another one that's good. No. Uh, do you remember when they tried to remake Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas with updated like stories and the animation was different and Max had a girlfriend? That yeah, was weird. They me. made a sequel to it, and I. When I was making the list, I was I put it as Mickey's once slash twice upon a Christmas because I couldn't remember which things were in which. And then I looked it up and I was like, oh, the good ones are all in the first one. Why would Correct. I include twice upon a Christmas in this? Correct. Twice upon a Christmas I've only seen one time because it was nothing, nothing compared to Mickey's once upon a Christmas. Absolutely. The So the three shorts in once upon a Christmas are the... Huey, Dewey, and Louie basically Groundhog Day themselves through Christmas. So cute. So cute with their Uncle Donald. Mm -hmm. Love Donald Duck. He's my favorite Disney character. I don't know if you knew. Really? Probably. Because people used to make fun of me. Okay, I kind of did this to myself. I long, long, long ago bought a sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. And on the front it says it has Donald Duck's face on it. And on the back it says Team Donald. Okay. These last few years <laughs> have been trying when I wear that sweatshirt because people will see me from behind and be like, that's bold of you to wear in public. And I'll turn around and be like, is it? And they'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. And I'll be like, yeah. <sighs> you need to like perfect your Donald Duck impression when you say, is it to them? Be like, oh, I can't. Oh, God. For real. That was I can't do it either. <clears throat> oh, I is it? Clear quack, my quack. Now. I'm not wearing pants. I'm a duck. <laughs> Uh, I love that. There's Duck. also Goofy tries to make sure that Max believes in Santa Claus. Oh, oh, so cute. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then harmonica ist Mickey Mouse, mm-hmm. the gift of the Magi. Love it. Love it. Oh, the gift of the Magi one is the one that sticks the most clearly in my mind. Uh-huh. Um, that one was, I think, my favorite one when I was little. Yeah. Because Minnie's Second, working at the yeah. Triangle Shirtwaist Factory. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's gonna go up in flames. <laughs> Not to make a too soon, too soon, too soon. Uh, too Ninety soon? years ago, I don't know. Anyway, um, I know that you didn't number your list beforehand, but do you have a number seven yeah. that you can pull from? You know what? I am thinking about it, and I think I can form a good list. Okay. Now, let me just put a little something next to it so I know what number eight was. 
Number seven. Now, my mom's going to be mad I didn't put this higher, but number seven is not a Christmas movie. Okay. But my family watches it at Christmas every year. Okay. And it is The Bells of St. Mary's. Okay. Starring none other than Bing Crosby and Ingrid Bergman. Mm -hmm. It is older than dirt, and it is a Catholic (laughs) movie. It's a very Catholic movie. And that is it. It's I love it. Every time you smell a rose, aren't you glad you've got a nose? Bing Crosby's a priest. Ingrid Bergman's a a nun. Spoiler alert for this ancient movie. She gets <laughs> tuberculosis. He's got a oh man. He like saves the school. They tr- the nuns trick the wealthy businessman next door into giving him their giving them their building so that they can make it into a school because he, they think he's donating it and he do- oh I just love it. I love it so much. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, we always talk about how we both have tremendous catholic guilt. Yes. Oh, I guess it's a little Christmassy. There's a scene where they do a Christmas play halfway through the movie. Okay. I mean, every Catholic movie is somehow a Christmas movie a little bit. Like, Lady Bird is a little bit of a Christmas <gasps> movie. Don't. Don't. Every time I watch Lady Bird, I cry. My mom wanted me to watch it with her, and I said no. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I refuse to watch it with you because I have Catholic guilt. Ooh. I can see myself in too many characters. <laughs> I see myself in this movie yeah. constantly. Um, my number seven is a little different. It's not the Bells of mm-hmm. St. Mary's. It's Miracle on 34th Street, the original one. Same era. Yeah, same era. It's, it's okay. black and white. Uh, yeah. t- discovered today, the Oscar nominated for Best Picture Miracle on 34th Street. I think I knew that. That people, like, loved it so much, and I don't know why it was nominated, no offense to the Miracle on 34th Street, but, like, <laughs> I'm not surprised. Yeah. Like, it's so... I've only seen it once, because okay. I didn't love it, but... And it's the original, yeah. not the remake of it, right? No, I've never seen the remake. I've only seen the black and white old one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just got so much heart. It's it's basically the yes Virginia there is a Santa Claus story but yes. mm-hmm. as a movie and it does it it's just pitch perfect with it <sighs> pitch perfect too Christmas adjacent no oh god just realized uh, um so many Christmas adjacent films Harry Potter Christmas adjacent all of them all of them Happy Christmas Ron <laughs> oh, my Happy Christmas a sweater. Harry. Oh my god. Um, anyway, please excuse my bad English accent. Ain't fine. Please, sir, can I have some more? That's all. Happy Oliver. Christmas. <laughs> I'm still on Happy Christmas. What do you. So now that I'm thinking about it, the, the portrayal of Santa in Miracle on 34th Street is, mm-hmm. I think, maybe the best version in a movie? Because, like... I don't know. The Santa Claus has a pretty good portrayal of Santa. I know. Well, that's, like, not quite as magical, though. Like, that's magical in a humorous way, whereas Mm -hmm. I feel like you're right. Like, when you think of Santa, I feel like even if you haven't seen the movie Miracle on 34th Street, you've seen clips from it. Mm -hmm. And that's the image you think of. Yeah. You know, like a kid on his lap, like very magical, like the big full beard and the hat. And the ha- and like, I know that's like the standard description, but you know what I mean? Like I'm mm-hmm. picturing it in my mind right now, like yeah. in the black and white, like iconic. Yeah. Um, two other things about Miracle on 34th Street. It is. The ending is that Santa's existence is proven due to the United States Postal Service. Love Wonderful. that for them. Um, it's a strong pro postal service movie, which I adore. Um, Honestly, start streaming it again. <laughs> like, let's go. Let's support <laughs> the postal service. Uh, and the trailer for it before it came out, it was never advertised as a Christmas movie. Um, it was advertised really? as like, oh, it's got humor. It's got drama. It's got romance. It's got everything. But they never mentioned Christmas. And the trailer is like five and a half minutes long. Well, it's a Christmas movie. It is a Christmas movie. I guess movie. maybe they figured people would just figure it out. Yeah. Okay, what's your number six? 
Let me pull up my list. Uh, number six, I'd probably say Santa Claus is coming to town. The claymation. Mm-hmm. Fun fact. Before he dated Gage, like right before he dated Gage, I dated a guy who looked like the young ginger Santa. <laughs> the claymation. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I told him that to his face. That was his contact picture in my phone. Really? Probably why we didn't stay together. <laughs> <laughs> I have a. He was cool though. I have a friend who every he has like bright red hair and everything, mm-hmm. and every December he changed his profile picture back to that. Love that for him. Love that. That's a power move. It honestly. Is. And when I had my calling, yeah. when I had my like long beard, my mom yes. sent me the picture of it without any context or anything. No caption, mm-hmm. just the picture. And I shaved a couple of days later. <laughs> <laughs> That's a power move. It is. Um, um, can we also just talk about, without this movie, we wouldn't have such hits such as Heat Miser and Snow Miser. I know. And One Foot in Front of the Other. Two Those songs club bangers. Club bangers. Mm-hmm. I'm Mr. Heat Miser. I'm, I'm Mr. Mr. Sun. Sun. Thank you. Those are iconic. Mm-hmm. Um, also, Mickey Rooney as Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Who needs iconic. Andy Hardy anymore? We've got Mickey iconic. Rooney's new starring role. Amen. Um, I don't have this on my list because of my self-imposed restrictions on myself. Yes. But it would be. I, yeah. I, I looked it up and I was like, oh, darn it. It was a TV movie. Mm-hmm. All those good ones were. When I was little, I even had one about um, Here Comes Peter Cottontail. And uh-huh. It was that same company. Rankin and, and he Bass. Went through like, yeah, and he went through the whole um, calendar year. And I used to watch that year round with my cousin when I was little at my grandma's house. Mm-hmm. Clear as day, I remember that. Yeah, well, there's all, I was go, obsessed. Going through the whole year, there's also the year without the Santa Claus, which is the sa- It's <gasps> basically the direct yes. sequel to this. Yes, it is. But it did not make my list. Okay. Um, my number six is White Christmas. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, mostly because of the Sisters song when... Sisters. <laughs> sisters. sisters. There uh, were never my such mom. devoted sisters. Never had to have a chaperone, no, sir. Dan. Oh, boy. What is that? I'm here to keep my eye on On her. her. I got it. Don't worry. I got you. I'll sing the whole song. You can just dance when we perform this. Okay, wonderful. Um, White Christmas is the only one that I didn't watch as a kid that's on my list. I watched it for the first time. It's a good movie. I think when I was a senior in high school was the first time I watched it. I was like, oh, it's just so, uh, like, aggressively 1950 whatever correct um you know rosemary clooney's struggling with an eating disorder while filming it mm -hmm. uh bing crosby being 50 something and rosemary clooney being 25 or whatever wow (laughs) the 50s were really wild crazy time flipping rosemary clooney through clooney through the air for a dance number (laughs) honestly that's where my fears come from your fears come from white christmas my fear of being tossed through the air in a dance number. <laughs> um, what else is, I mean, what is there to say about white Christmas that hasn't been said? It's classic. It's I mean, classic. It, I mean, it was supposed to be a, a reuniting of Bing Crosby and Fred Astaire. Oh, I forgot Holiday it was Fred Astaire. Oh yeah. wait, is it Fred Astaire? No, it's not. In that movie? It's, is it, it's Danny Kay, I think. Okay. I couldn't remember for a second. Yeah. I mean, Bing, obviously, you know, Bing, my man, is the one who, boom, in my eyes. That's who I'm picturing. Well, yeah, boom with his eyes. Mm-hmm. They're so blue. Mm-hmm. And this is such a technicolor movie. Was everybody's eyes in the 50s blue? Like, if you were a white man, did you have to have blue eyes? Was it required by law? Considering my that grandpa my hairline, and my dad have blue eyes. Yeah, my hairline is from the 50s, and I have blue eyes. True. My dad and my grandpa, both products of the 50s. Well, my grandpa is not a product of the 50s, but my dad is a product of the 50s. Mm -hmm. They both have blue eyes. What's the tea on that? It's the nukes. It's from the nukes. Mm -hmm. All that nuclear testing. Clearly. (laughs) Blue eyes were not a thing before 1950. Did you know? 
that's like one of those uber facts on facebook that people would share around in <laughs> high school i'd be like this is not true there's no way this is true yes it is facebook said it was true <laughs> what's your number five my number five is probably oh it's a toss-up between two but i'm gonna go with the jim carrey grinch okay i just watched this the other night actually mm-hmm um, I made hot chocolate and watched it. It's cute. Like, I mean, everybody loves it. It's got the uh, adult humor in it that's still funny for us now, uh-huh. while also just being really cute and a good movie. Very progressive. The Grinch, the Grinch was raised by two lesbians. Um, <laughs> you can't tell me otherwise. Uh, I, 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 I like it. I think a lot about the fact. I just understood the joke today, like last week when I watched it as an adult. When the Grinch is talking to himself and he puts on a baseball hat, this flew right over my head when I was little watching it, but he's being Ron Howard, and Ron Howard directed yeah. the movie. And as an adult, I'm like, how? I mean, obviously, I didn't understand that when I was little because I didn't really know who Ron Howard was. Mm-hmm. But as an adult, I'm like, ha! That's the good <laughs> stuff right there. <laughs> uh, I do not have How the Grinch Stole Christmas on my list. Not even the cartoon one that was not. Wasn't was that also special. nominated? Oh, of um, course it was. No, I don't have it. I th- I haven't watched it since I was a kid, and I was too sc- I was scared of it. I thought all the Dutch oh, yeah. angles He's... and everything it, it was so stylized that it I is was a little intense. Really thrown off by it, but I mean, I've scrolled when I've been flipping through channels that it's been on. I'll watch five minutes yeah. of it, and I, it's fun. Jim Carrey's good in almost everything, so yeah. Never forget that he had to go through, like, military uh, torture training to be able to put that costume on. (laughs) Except I don't understand because the prosthetics are mostly just on his nose. Yeah, well, it's probably, like, your nose and your mouth, and it cuts off your breathing, so you're such a restricted restricted breathing. Yeah, That would freak me out. I also would have to go to military training. Yeah. I'd be like, Ron, I'm nervous. (laughs) (laughs) He'd be like, Anna, we knew that when we met you. Andy, you threw up during your audition. Yes, that's just my process. Just when you were saying your name. Hi, I'm Anna Otto. Oh, sorry, I'm nervous. Bleh. Yeah, pretty much. That's my process. <laughs> my number six, is, or we're on number, number five. five. Yeah, uh, my there number five go. is Scrooged. I've never seen that. It's fun. Who's in that? Who's the it's lead? It's the Bill Murray Christmas Carol movie. Bill Murray. Yeah. That's what it was. For some reason, I was like, is that also Jim Carrey? <laughs> <laughs> He was in that cartoon one that they made. Yeah, the, the, the Robert Disney Zemeckis released. one. Oh, I thought the. Oh, wait, he's the director. I'm an idiot. I know who Robert Zemeckis <laughs> is. He directed Back to the Future. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so Scrooge, it's Bill Murray. He's a TV executive and he goes through a um, a Christmas Carol Night- yeah. story. Christmas Carol? Yeah. I don't know why Almost I forgot it. Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> yeah, he goes to Jim Halloween Skelling World. To the beers. Um, Halloween World sounds like a costume shop. That's Spirit Halloween. <laughs> he goes to Spirit Halloween <laughs> in the mall. Um, it's it's fun, and it, it, it's based around the TV sh- channel's production of A Christmas Carol, too. Okay, like that's, that's a cute. big plot point in it. Um, they always would show it on AMC. They'd show, like, a week of Scrooge. They'd show it every night, and I'm like, that's weird. But... <laughs> I'll watch it. <coughs> Excuse me. It's also incredibly 80s. Love that. It's all You know I love It's the all 80s. about like corporate raiders and stuff like that. Oh god, is it just <laughs> an extension of um American Psycho? It's, more Wall Street. Yeah, it's It's more just like Wall Street. Oh god, no thank you. Uh what's your number 5? Four? Whatever you mean my number. number four? Sure. Yeah. No, do number <laughs> five number again. Four. I I liked it so much. It's Let's the Grinch yeah. still. Oh, great. What's your number Wait, four? Wait, right? One, two, three, four. Oh, no. Dan, I think we messed up our numbers. Oh, well, wait. No. Yeah, no that's right. Yeah. Sorry, we're only doing eight movies for some reason in my brain, <laughs> even though I was looking at my list. I was like, we're doing ten. Uh, Anyway. Back to it. My number four is um, Elf. Okay. Actually, yeah, no, it's Elf. It's definitely okay. Elf. Um, it's cute. I love it. Everybody in my family's obsessed with it, so that's like kind of where I got to be mm-hmm. done with it. Um, because I love it and I think it's really cute, but it's not my favorite Will Ferrell movie. I'll say that right now. 
by far, we know my favorite is Talladega Nights. Yes. Um, I think it's cute in a lot of ways, but I think I just watched it too much when I was younger. Okay. That now I'm like, oh, Elf is not... Like, I remember when it came out, and so... It was so... It's still big. Like, you can still go... When did that movie come out, Dan? You know? Yeah, I was at Target the other day, and they still sell Buddy the Elf pajamas. Like, yeah. every stinking year for my whole life at Christmas time, people... Buddy the Elf, what's your favorite color mm-hmm. when you answer the phone? Or... We have our special, like, candy, food pyramid, ice cream cone you can get. That's all fine and well good and very cute, and I'm sure kids love it. Mm -hmm. It's a great kids movie with adult themes that are funny. But, I don't know, like, it's just not my favorite. It's good, and I'll watch it, but I have to be in the mood. Okay, yeah. My mom is obsessed. My mom is obsessed (laughs) with Elf. She loves Elf. She's also going to be offended that I just said it's not my favorite. Mm Mm-hmm. Sorry, Mom. I have Elf at number two on my list. Um, really? Okay. Yeah, but I'll talk about it now. Um, I, it, you're not getting a lot of in-depth criticism from us because all we're going to say for most of these is it's cute, it's fun, because they all are. They're Christmas movies. Uh, yeah, I yeah. mean, there's not really much to criticize about Elf. Like, Yeah, I think like <laughs> uh, from a critical level, I think the third act is far weaker than the first two acts. And yeah. it, that's the reason that I think you would have it um, part partially because of the overplaying of it, but also yeah, the reason it doesn't, it, it immediately became a Christmas classic, but the reason that it's not like in the pantheon of them is because the, all the things that people remember are basically everything before the end. The, the end yeah. is kind of forgettable. Yeah. It's like he helps Santa fix his sleigh. sleigh. Yeah. The end. This news reporter wishes that her boyfriend would stop <laughs> dragging his feet and propose. Like, that I remember because it's funny. Yeah. But. Um, also, Peter Dinklage, he's in it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I always forget Peter Dinklage is in it because this was before Game of Thrones. It so is, he yeah. He was, like, popular, but not, like, popular like he is now in everything. Yeah. Uh, and directed by John Favreau. Forgot about that. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. John Favreau, yeah. now like the czar of Star Wars with the Mandalorian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he is the child. Yeah. Like he he gave us something that we yeah. didn't know we needed. He created a cultural phenomenon twice. Mm-hmm. How do you think he feels about that? Pretty good. I think he feels pretty good. Like I know I know as far as elf goes, like Will Ferrell is Buddy the Elf, Mm -hmm. but the director, whether it be theater, movies, anything, he's the base of the pyramid, you know? He he, he crafted the movie that we... (sighs) (laughs) Anyway. Man, I think a lot about when I was in college and I was supposed to do a presentation on a director, and I was like, I don't know any directors, and now I'm an adult, and I know so many directors yeah. that I could have done projects on. <laughs> but whatever, I guess. The before, We love Happy. Before I say my number four, the, the last thing about Elf is, and basically with my top three movies, is they're so positive Christmas movies. Like the... There's no, there's not a hint of a lack of sincerity or sarcasm in like the spirit of them. You and I really do have different. Okay, Dan. I know. Well, that now that I've got to say my number four, it's Christmas Vacation, which is a total one eighty, which is all about sarcasm. Yeah, you did not make my list. I don't love that movie. It's fine, but like. I'm sorry, just like Home Alone, which is probably also on your list because yes. you and I have very, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't think it's funny the, the shitter's full and like. <laughs> yeah, I like, like Christmas Vacation okay. for everything except for Cousin Eddie. I don't like Cousin Eddie. I'll allow it. Yeah. I do think, what is it, the Jam of the Month Club? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I'll give you that much. Mm-hmm. That's funny. But, <laughs> meh. That's me. Sorry I roasted your movie. Uh, no, no, it's fine. It's not like it means everything to me. It's not like it means the world to me, Anna. 
Is that like um, I'm Clark Griswold, Bears fan, lover of Christmas, too many maybe that's lights, why I don't like wants it. a pool? Bears fan. That's me. Bears fan, that's why I don't like Jam it. Jam of the Month Club, I'm a member, not by choice. Thought you were going to get your Christmas bonus, Dan, I didn't did. you? I did. I already put the down payment on the pool. I will give it bonus points because there is a Rottweiler in it, and yes. he is cute. What's your number four? Rudolph. Okay. Rudolph would be on Very... my list. It'd be my number two if I was doing that. You know, okay, I know we were talking about not including um, Christmas specials, but I should have put Charlie Brown on my list because I fell asleep to the Christmas Charlie Brown soundtrack every single night for my entire childhood up until I went to college. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing Charlie Brown Christmas pants right now. Yeah, because it's so soothing. Anyway, that's not what my number four is. I just was thinking about it (laughs) because, you know. Yeah. Rudolph. It smashes toxic masculinity, okay? Okay. His teacher, I think it's Donner or something, he's out here trying to be toxic. You know what? You know who comes up up on top in the end? Rudolph. Absolutely. Rudolph comes up on the end because... (sighs) He's true to himself, okay? He might go st- through some struggles trying to cover his nose and stuff, but what what makes him different makes him special, my dude. Mm-hmm. Okay? <laughs> also, when I was little, I went through the... Hmm, how do I describe this? Most embarrassing Rudolph phase of my life? What is a Rudolph phase? It's a phase where all you do is talk about how much you want to watch Rudolph until it's Christmas time. You buy only Rudolph things. Rudolph has a -A Build-A-Bear that just came out, and you're begging your parents for it and begging them and begging them. And, okay, I'm a full-grown adult. Yes. I am 25 years old. I have a boyfriend who I live with, and I'm still baffled by one specific Christmas incident. I know Santa isn't real, but I still can't figure out how my parents did this, and I hope my mom never tells me, okay. because it keeps the magic of Christmas alive. So my parents got me, or Santa got me, I should say, a stuffed Rudolph Build-A-Bear for mm-hmm. Christmas. I wanted one so bad, and my mom would not take me, obviously, because they got me this Build-A-Bear. Yeah. Day after Christmas, his ear, or his nose, stopped lighting up. Mm -hmm. Because I was sleeping with him because I was so excited. I was, like, holding him really tight and hugging him. Yeah. And I was devastated. My mom goes, okay, put him back under the tree, and Santa will pick him up. Put him back under the tree. The next day, I shit you not, there's a note that says, I fixed your nose, but this is the only time I can do it. Love, Santa. And Rudolph's nose worked again. How? How did they do that? There's no battery pack. You'd have to go physically open this toy and also also they couldn't take him to builder bear at night would my dad perform some surgery on this thing what happened what's the tea family i think about that a lot dan the tea is that santa is real santa's real like you can't change my mind (laughs) like i know i'm an adult but my parents really pulled off some tricks that have me not 100% sure, okay? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Am I am I a 25-year-old woman who believes in Santa Claus? <laughs> Bitch, I might be. Let's just say that. <laughs> anyway, I love Rudolph. Rudolph, I it's, think it's so cute. It's great. It smashes toxic masculinity. It does. It smashes anti-dentistry Amen. sentiments. Amen. Hermie, my boy. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a smash. I saw somewhere that somebody was like, the reason why Hermie wants to be a dentist is because he's a human, not an elf. You can tell because he has round ears. I was like, uh. I don't want to be a dentist. too hard. No, I was like, right? I was like, can't relate. Dentists are the number one suicidal profession. Like, I don't think. Are they? That's it, my dudes. Yeah, dentists are the most likely to kill themselves. Huh. If you're a dentist and you feel alone, I promise. Just don't take you, it personally if people just, are scared of you. They just, love you. Just give your patient a kiss. Uh, maybe don't do that during COVID or ever. <laughs> or ever, probably. <laughs> Unless the patient is like your spouse. Yeah. Um, or there's consent, I guess. Are we on number three? <laughs> Sorry for blowing up your phone. Oh, my gosh. Please edit that out. 
please edit that out. <laughs> Are we uh, number three? Um. <laughs> I think we are. No, I think we one, two, three, four, five, six. We just did. No, we're on number two. Um. Well, I think I still need to do my number three. Yes. Yes. Do your number three. Uh, it's Home Alone. Oh my gosh, your eye roll. Um. I, I appreciate you anyway, Dan. Wait, I, is this the one that has uh that has Joe Julia Pesci? Louis Dreyfus or is that? No, that's Christmas Vacation. Okay. No, Home Alone, it's the Christmas movie that I watched by far the most when I was a kid. It's set basically the town over from where I grew up. So Mm -hmm. That makes sense why you would watch it. Yeah, there's the hometown thing. Um, Mm -hmm. It's it's slapstick. It's fun. It's got a good message. Um, It's got Joe Pesci. Donald Trump is in it. How do you feel about that? He's not. He's in Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, which didn't even get an honorable mention. Okay. I'll allow it. (laughs) Um, It was directed by Chris Columbus shortly after he crossed the ocean blue. I was going to say shortly after he committed genocide. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I mean... Macaulay Culkin, he's weird now, but he was such a precocious, lovable seven-year-old. Yeah, you know that um, he and Michael Jackson were, like, kind of friends. I do, Not friends yeah. because he was a child, but you know what I mean. Yeah. I don't know how to put that in a way that makes me feel comfortable. Nothing will. No, there's no way about it to make it feel I'll put it this way. Macaulay Culkin was in Michael Jackson's music video for the song Black or White. Thank you. So was Tyra Banks. Really? Where? In the face morph. Probably in the part. face morph? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's why I don't remember her off the top of my head because there are a lot. Well, yeah, I'll just have to watch it again. I'm sure I'll recognize her as soon as I see it, but I just yeah. don't think about that scene that often. Um, I, I always am like, man, when I'm going through Winnetka or, yeah, it's Winnetka or, or Waukegan. No, not Waukegan, Wilmette. It's one of those two towns is where the movie was filmed. Um, Mm -hmm. Well, actually, so the insides of the house in Home Alone Mm -hmm. were filmed in the um, pool of New Trier High School. Because when they flood the basement, they need to be able to flood it. So they built the set inside the pool. Um, That's cool. And the library for the Breakfast Club um, was in the gymnasium Mm. of New Trier High School. Because they're both John Hughes. Okay, that's cool. also, yeah, John Hughes wrote this, so of course I'm going to like it. I like everything John Hughes does, especially Drill Sorry, Bit that Taylor. that was a big sigh. That was a big Don't sigh. mention that movie again. <laughs> I'm sighing because I... I was thinking about Drill Bit Taylor again. <laughs> I need to get a wind sock for how often I... Not a wind sock, a wind guard, whatever those are called. I need to get a little hat for my microphone because I sigh all the time. It's fine. What's your number two? I'll be home for Christmas. Okay. Don't pick your teeth at me. I just think it's fun. You know, okay. I know. We did, we had a whole episode, episode about it. Listen to our last episode. <clears throat> yes, it's fun. Okay, what's your number two? We already know it's about Elf. We already talked about on. it. Oh, yeah, that's Elf. right. It's Elf. Yeah. Well, number two is boring for both of us, I guess. Wonderful. Um, are there any movies that you've thought about while we were talking about this that you don't have on your list that you want to make an honorable mention before we do number one? No. Great. Me either. <laughs> What's your number of. one? Well, well, we already talked about Charlie Brown Christmas. Yeah. So like, I guess that doesn't really count. If this, if I had added like Christmas or Christmas shows or TV specials, I think maybe only three of the movies that are on this list. I think only Home Alone, Elf, and my number one would still be on the list. Because mm-hmm. the TV specials, Christmas ideas and like Christmas spirit and stuff, it's way better espoused in 30 minutes or 60 minutes than in a full movie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It can start I getting with that. saccharine or like overdone. Um, mm-hmm. But when it's the grandma got run over by a reindeer Cartoon Network TV special, God, I forgot it's about that. <laughs> I completely forgot about Oh, there was this movie that I like, like to watch when I was little. All of the Annabelle's other Wish. Oh, that I know Annabelle's Q2. Wish. Annabelle's Wish, yeah. yeah. I liked that movie when I was little. 
I liked it because it had the name Anna in it, even though her name was Annabelle. But I used to watch the crap out of that. I also like the Beauty and the Beast Christmas special because that is Tim Curry playing the organ. Is it because it's Annabelle? Is Annabelle in Beauty and the Beast? No, it's Belle. Yes, that's Belle. You uncultured swine. Also, I see Poppy in the background. Hi, Pop. Yeah, my cat is looking out the window. Is it She's snowing? so cute. Maybe. Not yet. It's going to snow tomorrow, though. Yeah. What's your number one? Number one. Christmas Story. It is? <laughs> yeah. It's an auto family classic. My okay. mom has the leg lamp. She has um, a figure of the dad. The character is just called the old man, you know. Mm. Um, we visited the house where the movie was filmed. You went to um, Indiana? No, the it's actually in Cleveland. Okay. They filmed it in Cleveland, even though it takes place in Indiana. Um, what else? What else? What else? My mom has a bunch of ornaments dedicated to it. We quote it regularly. Like, my favorite quote from that movie is, You used up all the glue on purpose. <laughs> um, I was going to say this before I forgot to mention during Rudolph. Uh, when Gage... So last year... Gage played Santa for a couple of my work events. Mm -hmm. And whenever I baked cookies, we would quote Rudolph and say, nobody likes a skinny Santa. And then he'd eat a bunch of cookies and it was so cute. Um, But yeah, I quote Christmas story with my parents all the time. Obviously, some parts of it are um, not quite as well aged as Mm -hmm. others. But, you know, it's the last, literal last scene in the whole movie. Yeah. So I'm just going to talk about the rest. Yeah. <laughs> um, it wasn't even released around Christmas time, if I remember correctly. Really? I don't know. All I know is that I went on a guided tour of the house where it was filmed, and it was awesome. And um, my family just, like, that's our movie. My mom, every Christmas, changes her profile picture to a picture of a cookie that somebody made specifically for her that's a leg lamp. Mm-hmm. And, like, we have our leg lamp. My dad bought it for my mom. We have leg lamp ice cube trays we have leg lamp lights we have leg lamp ornaments my mom pretty much is a leg lamp at this point like she's morphed (laughs) um it is we watch it while we bake cookies we pretty much don't even have to watch it like we just can quote with it you can just go beginning to end i could recite this film Mm -hmm. like dan It's one of my favorite movies. Like, I, it's just, it's a classic. Like, I'll always think of my family when I watch it. Yeah. Um, which is so odd because it's just such like a, I don't even know. Like, it's so weird. Not mm-hmm. weird. A lot of people like it, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just so not a family movie, I feel like. It's not a family movie, but it evokes the feeling of family. Yeah, because it's like kind of a, you know, instead of a Christmas time, families are perfect sort of thing, it's like a, Hey, my family's a mess all the time. Here we are trying to make it through Christmas. Yeah, the end. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, I-, I love the scene. Like, sorry, I'm just thinking now of all the scenes I love in it. Like, I love the, um, there's so many scenes. Like, when when Randy gets in, or not Randy, um, when the boy, why can't I think of his name? Oh, my God. This is how embarrassing. This is supposed to be my favorite Christmas movie, and I'm having such a brain fart. Ralphie? Ralphie. Yeah. Uh, can't believe that just happened. Randy's his brother. <laughs> Randy lay there like a slug. Um, <laughs> when Ralphie gets into a fight with the bully at his school, and his mom, like, takes him home and doesn't get mad and doesn't tell his dad and stuff. Like, it talk, it, fo- it shows you, like, connections between children and their parents and parents, <laughs> like... The parents might be crazy, but they still love each other. They make a good thing out of a holiday, even though there's so many crazy things that happen. Like, it's just a good movie, and it makes me feel good when I watch it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, can you guess what my number one is? Is it perchance it's a wonderful life? Man? How'd you know? How did you figure it out? <laughs> Because you're my antithesis, apparently. I am your antithesis. Um, I mean, it has my favorite actor in it. Mm-hmm. It's Jimmy Stewart. Uh, it also has Donna Reed, who I absolutely adore. She's his wife. Um, Mary! She's just about to close up the library. She's a librarian. Okay, okay, hold. Full stop. Record scratch. You know that the play where Gage and I met 
was a spoof of It's a Wonderful Life. Really? He was playing Clarence, and I was Violet the Slut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway. Yeah, but no, I mean, there was other things wonder- too, but yeah. Yeah, but It's a Wonderful Life. It's a wonderful film. Um, thank you. Oh, boy. It has everything that I want. An old man yelling at a child. Mm-hmm. Um, that really evokes the Christmas spirit. Partial deafness. Um, mm-hmm. Gym floors opening in the middle of dances. Uh, mm-hmm. Stories told out of order. Mm-hmm. Um, Suicide attempts. <laughs> a child. Um, what? Ew. <laughs> there's just everything about it I love. There's not a. There's nothing about the movie that I don't like. Even the like four minutes at the beginning where it's just a matte painting of stars flashing in black and white. I mean, only watch the black and white version. Don't watch it in color. Yeah. Um, That's how Clarence and God talk. I know. Um, and now I'm just thinking of the, the scene where it's like Jimmy Stewart explaining how banks work. Oh, oh God! Oh, your yeah. money's in Dave's house, and, and Dave's money's in Joe's house, and Joe's money's in my house, and my house is in yeah. your house. It's... We did that scene in the spoof. Uh. <laughs> uh. I I don't know how to put it into words because I like it so much, but it's fantastic. It's great, and it only became popular because of a clerical error where people thought it dropped into public domain because they thought that they had not renewed the copyright on it they had <laughs> oh lord but, above but nbc had been airing it for like 30 years at that point that it was too late mm-hmm. yeah yeah <sighs> <laughs> i know you love it i the only time gage was in a show that i didn't see it was when he did his second performance of it's a wonderful life uh-huh <sighs> <laughs> it was mostly because it was expensive and I couldn't attend. Yeah. But also because Gage's family also really loves It's a Wonderful Life. His dad loves it. Mm-hmm. My family's kind of whatever about it. But if that's what floats your boat, Dan, that's pretty chill and harmless. Like, there's at least that's an old movie that doesn't have blackface in it. Right? Hey, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Um, Neither does the Bells of St. Mary's. Let's just be clear. We were watching the trailer for the original Ocean's Eleven, which is oh, not no. a good movie. It's really bad. Mm-hmm. It's really boring. Mm-hmm. But we put up the trailer on HBO Max, and we were like, okay, this is just nothing. And then at one point, they just start doing blackface. And I'm like, there oh, we go. There no, we go. You. Hey, friends, let's not. <laughs> and that's the message that we have for you this Christmas. Let's not do blackface. Yeah, for real. <laughs> uh, no. Any other thoughts or any other Christmas movie things? I watched my first Hallmark Christmas movie all the way through this past weekend. Oh, you made it. I don't know what it was called, but it was kind of cute. It had Melissa Joan Hart in it and a guy from 90210. Mm. Was she a busy businesswoman who went back uh, to her small hometown where her dad runs a Christmas tree farm and she needs to take over it before the no. corporation takes it? Not quite. Um, she was a busy, busy podcaster. Ooh. Who talked about ro- like it was like love at the holidays. Okay. And she had never found love herself. Oh. You know, of course not. Of course. And she had written a book, and so she went home for ho- the holidays, mm-hmm. obviously. And um, she lived. Her family lives in Reno. Okay. And so along the way, I think it was Reno, maybe it was Lake Tahoe. She lived somewhere that I'd heard of, but I didn't remember which place it was. Mm -hmm. Um, So she drove there from Chicago and she got there. And as she arrived, her car broke down. Oh, no. And this guy shows up and he fixes it. And he's like, I'll see you tomorrow. And she goes, uh, are you sure? And she, he goes, pretty sure. And the next day. There he is. We find out his name is Chris Mass. <gasps> or something like that. Maybe it's Chris Massey. Either way, <laughs> he calls himself Mr. Christmas. They keep bumping into each other. You know, you know they're going to fall in love. You know Absolutely. they're going to fall in love. Um, mm-hmm. It was, yeah, it was classic Hallmark. Of course. 
Don't worry, Anna. You're not done with It's a Wonderful Life yet. I know I'm not. I am nervous. <laughs> Come back next week for our Christmas, I think it's Christmas Eve special. Mm -hmm. It's a it Wonderful is. Life. I'll probably end up releasing it a day early just because that's what'll happen. Like when I put out <laughs> Planes, Trains, and Automobiles at 1130 the night before Thanksgiving. Um, yeah, we'll be talking yeah, about oh, goodness. It's a Wonderful Life next week. So get ready for that. Stay tuned. It's an okay life. <laughs> it's a wonderful film. Every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. It's Thank wangs. You. It's wangs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wangs. Amen. Uh, if you want to support the show, you could do so on Patreon at patreon.com slash inconclusion. If you want to find it on the internet, Facebook and Twitter, it is at and in conclusion. Instagram, it's at in conclusion podcast. If you want to find me, you can find me on Twitter at Dan O'Keefe 86 on Instagram at D L R A A R. Um, and what's another website that I have a weird account on? Um, do you have a Twitch? You were posting, you were uh, plugging your, um, your, I plugged my TikTok last time. Yeah. You um, plugged your blog. If you want to find me on LinkedIn, I have a LinkedIn. Oh, LinkedIn.com. I think it's slash Dan O'Keefe. I don't know. Just, Just look start me looking up, up Dan O'Keefe. Yeah. <laughs> You'll find me. I'm the one that looks smarmy. Anna, where can they find you? Okay, first of all, I'd like to say my bosses found out today that my Instagram handle is what it is, and uh -huh. they thought it was really funny. And I was like, oh, I guess <laughs> I forgot that, like, you guys don't know that about me yet and haven't heard me talk about this being my Instagram handle for, like, ever. So you yeah. still think it's clever, whereas all of my friends don't. <laughs> um, you can find me on Instagram at Atomus Prime eight one eight, or you can find me on Twitter hair at Autobots Roll Out, capital O for Auto, capital B for Bots, capital R for Roll, and the O in Roll and the O in Out are zeros. Do I have any other fun accounts? Do, <laughs> are you I was ascending? making a didgeridoo sound. Yeah. I was making a didgeridoo sound. Um. I like to watch TikToks, so I have a TikTok account. Sometimes I post embarrassing videos of myself singing. Eh, that's it. I'm not giving the handle. Okay. I don't want you to look it up. So everybody go on a scavenger hunt for Anna Otto's singing TikToks. Mm -hmm. Here's a hint. It's actually not related to uh, Transformers. the Transformers. I don't oh, know why gosh. I can't think today. My brain is like, it's the end of the night. Let's let's eat something and just vibe. So I'm like, you right. Find Anna on TikTok at, at Otto Von Bismarck. No, that was my nickname in high school. How embarrassing. <laughs> God, when I got to college. Okay, if she's listening, you're very nice for acknowledging me in college. Somebody I went to high school with kept calling me B, which was my high school nickname. Uh-huh. And I had to explain to everybody why I got called B, and it's because people used to call me Otto Von Bismarck. How embarrassing. Well, if you want to hear me and Miss Von Bismarck next no. week, you can hear our It's a Wonderful Life episode. So come back for that. Same in conclusion time, same in conclusion channel. In the meantime, everybody, stay safe, have fun, wear a mask. Uh, don't kiss your neighbors on the lips. Now. Ring some bells so that some angels get some wings. Wangs. Get some wangs. Some wangs. Some buffalo wild wings. <laughs> and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Please hold don't quit it, the story of me it, pooping. Hold it. Hold it. I could hold this for so long because I'm a singer, Dan. Don't even make that joke. We'll be here for a long time. Hey, Google, stop. I made tea for this recording, so let me just get rid of my tea bag and I'll be ready to go.